Here we are in uh, Wurz Vineyard in the Seneca Valley uh, near Hollister with Pat Wurz. Uh, thank you very much for taking the time to, well, thank to you, chat Chris. with us today. Thank you, Chris. Uh, this is a pretty, pretty special place and definitely out of our usual area that we're working in, mostly in Sonoma Valley and Contra Costa in that area. We're kind of, we're down by Hollister. So can you tell, tell us a little bit about where we are and, and the history of how your family came to this place? Well, the, the Sienega Valley has been a, a, a wine growing area since the 1850s. Uh, the first Frenchman that came into this valley was a fellow by the name of Theodore Vachi in the, like I said, in the 1850s. My family bought the first piece of ground that we have in 1948. Uh, this vineyard that we're standing in now, we bought, my father and I bought together in 1983, and it was planted to Riesling when we bought it, Riesling and, and a, and a Zinfandel Cabernet Pfeffer blend on some of the hills, field blend. Uh, this particular vineyard, the Riesling, was planted in 1964 uh, by Alma Den uh, Vineyards, and they were a pretty big vineyard back in the day. Uh, some of the vineyard on the hills was planted in the 20s, some more was planted in 1903. Um, and like I say, our family's been in, in on this particular piece of ground since 1948. Uh, on my mother's side of the family, we've been in San Benito County since the 1850s. You have some you have some deep roots yes, here, we do. <laughs> like like yes. a lot of the vines out yeah. here, and it's it's interesting because you you know you don't see a lot of old vine riesling vineyards left, even though it was probably more planted than Chardonnay before the 1970s, 1980s out here. But yeah. you don't see a lot of old riesling vineyards well, left. Well, from what I understand, um, Almaden planted this this particular vineyard and um, several others. They had about two or three hundred acres of riesling, and they planted it. In, in the 60s, it was kind of a fashion, from what I understand, to make sparkling wine out of it. And that's what this is predominantly planted for. When we bought it, Riesling was kind of, Mark was kind of down. And we've had our ups and downs over the last 30 years with this vineyard because Riesling comes, goes and comes in and out of fashion. Uh, but I guess I'm just stubborn, so I, I hang on to it. <laughs> well, they're also pretty darn special <laughs> vines. I mean, with this being planted in 1964, that puts it right around second or third oldest Riesling vineyard in the state. Yeah, that's Stony what Hill, you Stony Hill has the oldest that I know of, which is, I think, 1948 or 1952, somewhere around there. Uh -huh. And then this is, this is right around the, the second or third oldest Riesling vineyard. And it's also own rooted, correct? There's yes. no rootstock yes. on this, no. which is also very unusual, whether you're talking Germany or America, yeah. you don't see a lot of own rooted Riesling vines. Yeah, and um, it is dry farmed. And it is dry farm, which with as all you out there know, Morgan and I love our dry farming. So thanks for keeping a dry <laughs> farm, you, Pat. Chris. Um, the only time that we've irrigated is during these major droughts. We had the one that we just came through and uh, we irrigated it with sprinklers a little bit just to save the vines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then there was a, we had a pretty severe drought about 20 years ago that we irrigated you know, one or two years, just the same thing, just yeah. to save the vines. Well, gosh, that, I mean, we've been working with this vineyard since 2014, and um, boy, did it like the rain this year. The vineyard looks it never did. better. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, the canopies are so much healthier, and yeah, it's, 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 it's looking like it's finally gotten a real drink. Yeah, well, it's like I told you, Chris, this, this is what the vineyard usually looks like yeah. when we're not in a drought. Although, you know, it made great wine even the drought. The vines got yeah. through it because it made some great wines in the yeah. drought. And also you have really unique soils here in the fact that there's actually limestone that we're standing yes, on. Yes, absolutely. Um, there, in fact, there are several bl large limestone uh, deposits, uh, large enough to where they can mine them. We have a mine just two miles down the road and um, where Calera has their vineyard uh, about two or three miles from where we're at in the mountains, why they, there used to be an old limestone a quarry up there so yeah, yeah so we're right by Calera which one of the great Pinot Noir producers of all of California um, Josh Jensen uh, one of the pioneers of Pinot Noir in California he was searching for limestone you know like a lot of people Absolutely. Pinot Noir do and he, that's how he ended up out here was his search for limestone yeah and am I not mistaken but he made his first wine off this vineyard off the Zinn on the hill correct yes. in 1975 right yeah yeah, yeah. so he and, a, he and a neighbor of his went together and they bought a ton of, of Zinfandel for my father and I and, and he made his first few barrels of wine off of 
some of the Zinfandel off our plate. But then he realized that Zinfandel is too challenging and to, <laughs> to make, so he decided to go to Pinot Noir, you know, a little which bit is, easier. Which is a much easier <laughs> Much grape. easier grape yeah. um, no. than, than the old vines. There. Yeah. Um, you ever uh, have that one? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's it was Josh did a nice you, job. You saw, the, you saw the potential greatness of Josh yeah. Jensen in that one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, Josh, I remember when Josh first came into the, the valley, he... Uh, bought a little piece of ground way back in the hills and which later became his Jensen Vineyard. Yeah. Um, yeah. And everybody thought Josh is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> a but, lot. That happens a lot when you're playing vineyards he, uh, and they think you're crazy. He, uh, he made his dream come true. Yes, he did. for him. Yes, he did. He's, yeah. he's, he's made some incredible wines and helped bring this area, I think, in a little bit more notoriety mm -hmm. for sure. Absolutely. Because there's also, you know, also down the street, there's Enns Vineyard, which is another amazing yeah. old vine vineyard in this yeah. area. Yeah. And I guess... Because that's the lime kiln AVA, correct? Yes. And yes. you're just outside of that. So yes, this is we're, in the, we're in the Sienega Valley. Sienega. Area. So that's yeah. right by Hollister, which everyone knows is a t-shirt company and thinks it's a surf company, even though it's nowhere near the ocean. No, now. But uh, no. there's also this incredible sort of farming community around yeah. here as well, because there's ranch, like you ranch cattle, and yeah. there's vegetable growers all around here. Yeah. This is this is real farm country well, out here. And, well, and, and like I said, some of the history of the Sienega Valley, in 1906, uh, William Palmtag, who had a, a vineyard in a winery just down the road uh, sent a lot of some wines to a blind tasting in Paris, France, and he beat a lot of the French at their own tasting in Paris. And he, I've, I've seen the medals to prove it. Yeah, and, old, and uh, before the judgment of Paris, the famous judgment of Paris, there was definitely some more famous wines going to Europe pre-prohibition. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty incredible. Everyone thinks that American wines really came on the international scene um, after the Judgment of Paris in the 70s, um, but really pre-prohibition, a lot of California wine was going to Europe because, A, they were being from flocks or they weren't making as much wine yeah. in Europe. Yeah. And also, you know, the British and the Paris Parisians were all talking about how great California wine well, was. Well, and the other thing, too, is that you have to remember that there were, and around the turn of the, of the 1900s, uh, there were a lot of Italian, yep. French, German immigrants yep. into particularly this part of California, the Santa Clara Valley and San Benito County, uh, and even up in Napa Sonoma area. Sure. And so they brought their culture with them, and part big part of their culture was the wine grapes. Yep. You had uh, Mersu and 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 uh, like I said before, Theodore Vachi, and you had Charles Lefranc yep. and Paul Masson. Yep. And a lot of the, the labels that are only labels now, but they were some of the pioneers in our industry. It's pretty incredible though. And it was a shame that we lost all that knowledge during Prohibition of It is. But it we're is. we're starting to get it back. Oh yeah. We're starting to yeah. get it back out well, here. Well there's a few stubborn guys around like me and <laughs> and uh, you and Morgan and a few others that yeah. uh, well, and it's it's fun, too, because how we came to this vineyard was um, our friend Bradley from Big Basin Winery. Shout out to Bradley. Um, makes great wines um, from Big Basin. He called me up, and it was pretty close to harvest, I would say, than when we first came out so, here. Yeah. It was like July-ish, mm -hmm. sort of. I remember kind of gearing up yeah. for harvest and called us up and was like, hey, I don't know if you're looking for this. I figured to give you guys, you guys love old vines. There's some old vine owner to reasoning out in Seneca Valley. And to be honest with you, I was like, Seneca Valley where? <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't really know Seneca Valley. And I was, and you know, people call us up all the time and are like, oh, we got these old vines. And I'm like, when are they, when were they planted? 1988. And I'm like, well, if they're, if they're younger than me, they're not old vines, <laughs> right? I'm gonna be insulted. And he's like, yeah, I think they were planted in the sixties. And I'm like, and he's like, and they're dry farmed and they're own rooted. And the guy out there is great. I get the red from the hill. You should go meet him. I call Morgan up and I'm like, hey, we gotta go check out this vineyard. And we come out here and we're like, just when you think you know every little pocket of California, you discover something new. And these, uh -huh. these vine, and Morgan knew the area because it ends, um, yeah. vineyard. Um, but it was pretty incredible. And the combination of old vine, dry farmed, Riesling on limestone makes a pretty killer wine. Yeah. These old vines, they're very, like, you don't have crazy off the charts total acidity levels, but because of the limestone, the pH st stays really low. So you get a lot of intensity of flavor because you can. We'll show some of the clusters on the on the B roll here, but you get these really tiny clusters that are really intensely flavored with great balance, and it tastes like worse. Doesn't yeah. taste like any other riesling that yeah. we work with. The only thing we have to do is 
try to hit the target sugar. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, we've done pretty good the last we few have. years. We you have, know? we have. Cruiser, and you're luckily a, a man of this area with some connections, so Pat, Pat doesn't struggle getting crews like some of us do in other parts. Well, at times, Yeah, at times. Well, and you do most of the work out here yourself. The pruning, uh, I hire the, the shoot thinning and most of the harvest, uh, but the pruning, the spraying, the cultivating, all of that is done either by myself or a family member. Yeah, so, um, and Pat's son, Donald, um, is also in the wine industry, went to UC Davis. Davis has yeah. a master's, master's degree in viniculture and enology. And uh, your daughter, Sarah, is always out here as well yes. during harvest driving. Pat also has one of the best collections of crawlers you will ever see. <laughs> I mean, they used to be a brand, and then over the years, Pat has made them the worst brand of tractors because you've yeah. rebuilt the engines, you've put new stuff on them. Yeah. They're, they're truly glorious uh, well, tractors. Well, I, I like the old track layers because particularly on the hills, why they're a lot more stable uh, to drive and- It's a pretty easy, steep hill up there. Yeah, easier to maneuver. And I started driving one when I was about five years old. So I'm kind of used to those old tractors. Yeah, and, Don and Donald and, and Sarah yeah. are pretty darn good at and it too. We, we, I brought them up to to teach them how to drive it too when they were kind of young. Yeah, yeah, they, they clearly are good at it. And then, uh, and then you know, you've had, obviously Josh worked with the vineyard for a couple of years. Yeah. But then you've had also Randall Graham, yes. who's, who's another from Bonnie Dune and many other projects. But um, he came out here in the, when, the 90s? Well, Ra uh, uh, Randall and I first got acquainted about, oh, I want to say about 93 or 94. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember exactly. Uh, when Randall was developing his Pacific Rim Riesling right. label. Um, and my this vineyard was some of the first in that particular Which label. back then it was kind of a small, yeah. geeky project. And now obviously Pacific Rim yeah. became and a giant thing. But this is one of the original vineyards for the yes, original Pacific is. Rim. Yes, it is. This and my neighbor had a Riesling vineyard and the two vineyards were his original Riesling for his Pacific Rim Riesling. I sold for that, sold Randall the grapes from this exclusively for, ab for approximately 15 years yeah. until Randall decided to uh, sell the label. And yeah. so then I, I've sold to Diageo and Constellation and now to you guys. And, and Nathan Candler. Nathan Candler. Uh, then who else is out here? Because I know. Um, well, there's. Um, uh, Ryan Sturm and right. Ryan Kozapro. He makes and, great wine, Ryan. And there are several other yeah, over little, the years and little. smaller uh, wineries. And you're planting years. a little Grenache for Randall. I have. Randall and I are working on a project with the new planting of Grenache, which will probably probably come <laughs> online in a, in a year or so. Yeah, yeah, that's great. We just planted the vineyard last year. Well, I, uh, you're one of the when I go out to a vineyard, I never can be more excited than when I see you. So well, thank you, Chris. It's, it's a real honor to be out here and, and get this fruit. And, and you know, California can make more than just Chardonnay and Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. And, and I think this is one of the true testaments to that, uh, this place. Yeah. So thank yeah. you for caretaking it and keeping it in the ground and farming it beautifully and selling us the grapes. Well, thank you, Chris. Thank you. Cheers, everyone.